Across this great nation, there is a culture of people who carry on a heritage. They have an intangible quality that can't be described, but it comes from deep within their hearts. They share an appreciation for the greatest things that come from Mother Earth. They watch over, understand, and care for the vast wilds of this great country. Fishing, hunting, and trapping are the foundations that Canada was built on. For over two centuries, we have taken to the woods and water to pursue wild game. Today, it's about conservation, preservation, and wildlife management. Whether you are a man or woman, fish or hunt, you should support sound wildlife management and proudly say, I am an angler and hunter. The Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters proudly presents Angler and Hunter Television. Brought to you by Canadian Tire, Nikon Sport Optics, Mercury Marine and Lund Boats, Yamaha ATVs, Browning Ammunition, Browning Firearms, Suffolk Fishing Line, Rapala, Camillus Knives and Cuda Tools, Excalibur Crossbones, and Yukon Gear. Turkey hunting has to be the ultimate test for a bow hunter. I'm surrounded by turkeys. Getting a bird within that magic 15 to 30 yards can often seem pretty easy, but unlike hunting them with a shotgun, where once you have an opening, it's pretty much game over, as the shot can spread over a six to 12 inch area. All these pellets here hit that bird. However, with archery, there's countless other factors. The biggest one being shot placement. Yes, I got double beard. <laughs> yes. Woo! Man, oh man, I'm telling you. A headshot can be tough, thus aiming for the center of the body where the wing meets the shoulder is the best option, needing you to place your arrow in about a three inch target. Add to this branches or debris in the way, human error, and of course the bird moving or flinching on your shot, and you have the makings of an often frustrating hunt. How about a tom in full strut and hitting nothing but feathers? I have personally missed several birds that were virtually in the bag, so to speak, lined up for a perfect shot. Oh my, oh my God. But I misjudged the distance. Shooting under and over birds and having them spooked by coyotes or just plain not interested in my calling has made for some frustrating days in the field. This is why there's no turkeys around. Even my daughter has doubts that she will ever be there when I harvest a turkey. Oh, stop, don't move, nobody move. Turkey right in front of us, August. Whoa, whoa, look right here. See how big that bird is? See the beard on him? That's a big tom. He's gonna go right across there. You can shoot him. What? You can shoot him. Tomorrow. The season opens tomorrow. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Yamaha ATVs. Here I go. I've taken several turkeys with my Excalibur over the years and even hunted them from a tree stand. Got him. Yes! I did it! Tom down! Out of a tree! Yes! 
And when it all comes together and your shot is perfect, well, that can be the most gratifying feeling in the world. What a season. <laughs> I got kind of creative this year and put a GoPro into one of my decoys. So one thing I'm gonna do before we get out there and set the decoys up, we're getting a late start this morning. The sun's already up. So let me check the field. We'll sneak to the edge. If there's no birds out there, I'm gonna hustle up and put my decoys out. Now you're looking at my decoy and saying it's pretty ugly. This is just an old styrofoam decoy I've had for, I don't know, 15 years. I don't use it anymore. It's lost its color, but uh, what I've done to it, I've cut a hole in the front of it here, and I'm gonna run a GoPro up through it. Jam it in there, and then what it's gonna be, I'm gonna put that GoPro on this tripod here. I'm gonna put that out in my decoy spread. I'm gonna turn that GoPro on Wi-Fi so I can connect to my phone. Pack a lot of this in there so it's a nice snug fit. And there. Put that out in my decoy spread. And uh, hopefully get some cool footage. And you might just get the shot of a lifetime. My setup for this hunt is downhill from a roosting area and just out of the bird's sight line. So they're gonna have to come to my calls before they actually see my decoys. And what I do with my decoys is I'm gonna set them up past my ground blind over here so that little birds, when they come down, they have to cross in front of me. If I was using my uh, Browning A5, I would probably put the decoys more in front of me so that I could get those birds to, to group up in front of me. But what I'm doing with the crossbow, um, I'm hoping to get that bird balled up and strutting or moving slowly across in front of me so I can get the crosshairs on them and, and get a good bolt placement. In this season, I'm testing out the new 308 short from Excalibur Crossbow. It's perfect for spot and stock hunting or shooting out of a confined space like a ground blind. This 308 short's loaded. It's so compact, I'm gonna just rest it on these cross sticks. And now I can accurately follow any birds in front of me with lots of range because this is such a compact crossbow. It's ideal for ground blinds. The accuracy of Excalibur crossbow is second to none. So knowing I have to hit a three inch target, and my decoys are set at 20 yards, I should be able to make a clean shot on any bird that comes into range. You want to use a good rangefinder, not only because I'm, I'm gonna be shooting through this mesh, and it, at long yardages or when I'm trying to pinpoint a small object, if you're trying to range something and you're shaking, it doesn't do it, but this, when you hit the button, stabilizes and you can range anything. It's pretty awesome, and I can range right through this mesh. So what's cool about this with the stabilizer, and even if, like my decoys are over here, if he comes down here and I don't want to move too much, I can just left-handed hold this. And normally with your left hand, you can't control things as good if you're right-handed like me. But with this being it stabilized, I'm on him already here, and I can just check my decoy at 15 yards. And now I know, see, it's pretty awesome. So if he gets into my decoys at 15 yards, I'm gonna just put my first pin on him and I know I can take that bird. I just gotta get him down here. Since 1928, the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters has been a leader in conservation. For the past 25 years, Angler and Hunter Television has been bringing the OFAH conservation message to millions of viewers to conserve and protect our great outdoors. In the 1980s, wild turkey in Ontario had almost been eliminated from the landscape. In 1984, the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters arranged to have 274 wild turkeys from various U.S. states released in Ontario. And with proper conservation guidelines, they made a huge comeback. Wild turkey now cover the entire range of southern and central Ontario. 
reaching amazing numbers that have allowed seasonal hunting to bloom in the province. It is a huge success for the turkey population, the biodiversity of the countryside, and everyone who loves the outdoors. Angler and Hunter Television is proud to bring the OFAH message of conservation and passion for the outdoors to viewers around the world, sharing the traditions of hunting, fishing, and trapping. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Minn Kota and Humminbird. For me, setting up in an area close to where turkeys roost is always a good bet for getting some action. Just make sure you get into your stand early and undetected. They look like big puffballs, so I'm gonna say they're, they're toms. Really important to have good binoculars. Um, when you're in a, in a ground blind like this, there's see-through mesh right here. You see this mesh? You can't see in, but I can see out. It's pretty cool stuff. It's a one-way mesh, and I can shoot right through it with uh, with the crossbow or even with it with a shotgun. If you have really good glass, like I'm using here, I can focus right through that screen, and I get a super sharp image. You want to be able to adjust that focus so you can see right past all that stuff, and find your objective, and that objective is those there's another one there two more just came down so they're they're on the ground but they're on the top of this hill now and i've lost sight of them so what i'll do now is i'll probably start calling and uh let them know i'm down here There's two there, maybe three. Oh, there's a hen too, I think. Perfect. Oh, this might work out. Now what I've done here is, uh, I've learned by my mistakes. When I was out earlier with August, um, we were in a ground blind and I didn't have, uh, I didn't, get my rangefinder out. I didn't have time. We had a bird come up the side of the field. August, they're coming. I'm gonna shoot one in about five seconds. And uh, I just guesstimated the yardage and shot like a foot under it. I missed them. I shot under them. But if one of these birds comes in, I'm not gonna take any chances. I'm gonna let him get real close. So when you're looking for a rangefinder, um, you know, don't cheap out. Uh, the Monarch, this Monarch from Nikon actually has a stabilizer in it so that if your hand shakes like mine and you're trying to range something, it will actually stabilize and then get the range. It's pretty cool. You should check that one out. With a couple of toms strutting up the hill, I knew it wouldn't be long until one of them, or even a Jake, would come looking and head into my spread. Okay, looks like we might have a player here. This guy's breaking off from the other birds. Now the good thing about this, you'll notice how small this crossbow is. I can move around in here, I can, I can get comfortable, I can even stand up and, and recock this crossbow if I happen to miss. Come on, roughed up old bugger, come on in. I'll take you. Up 
think wild deer's got those birds corralled. Now I got my hands full, so I'm gonna just tease them in here with the diaphragm call. That's right, boy. Come on. Okay, so he's like 70 yards now. And he's coming on a rope. The Hunting Edge is brought to you by Browning Ammunition. To get the edge over the turkey, I utilized a pair of Nikon binoculars to spot the birds roosting across the field. And a Monarch 3000 stabilized rangefinder gave me the perfect distance once they came into range. The Excalibur 308 short made for an accurate clean shot. And my trustworthy Camillus knife made for easy field dressing after a quick ride on the Yamaha Kodiak 450. Finally, it looks like this guy is going to walk straight in. Come on, boy. <laughs> oh, it's, it's definitely a Jake. I got a good look at him here. He's getting right into... He's at 50 yards. He's going to cross right in front of me. I got him. <laughs> He's down. And there you go. I can't believe how well that worked. I had some bad luck this season. But that Jake's right there. And you know, a lot of people are going to say, oh, you had a big Tom on the hill. He's still there, actually. It's amazing. As long as a turkey doesn't see him, they don't run away. They got their attention, and he's actually probably thinking of coming down here. As long as they don't see him, they don't, it doesn't really affect them. But my jig's down right there, and, uh, you know, I knew I was dialed in. I practiced and practiced when I put this new Nikon scope on the, on the Excalibur. And it's made for, it's made for crossbows. It's called the Bolt XR. So I knew when I put the crosshairs on that turkey, he was going to go down because he was inside 20 yards. That's my first uh, outing with the 308 short. And I mean, look at this little thing. It did the job. And, you know, I was in these blinds with my daughter. There's plenty of room for both of us. So if you're going to hunt out of ground blinds, you got to check this 308 short and let's go get that bird. <laughs> I'll take a Jake any day. And that is a Jake. He's got nothing for spurs. And uh, the smallest, I don't know, two inch beard. And uh, nothing for spurs, just bumps. But you know what, well, this is a perfect uh, young Jake and I'm probably gonna deep fry this bird. So um, it'll fit nicely in the deep fryer. Tie a nice knot. Can't tie knots, tie lots. There, tag 2018 bird. Man. Yeah, see that little spiky beard on him? <laughs> I watched two of them at all. But that's, uh, I'll take it. And I'm going to bring it back over there. I'm going to show you how. Uh, a handy way of getting these out of the field because I got to go get my uh, Kodiak so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw them in the vest and then I'm gonna hike out get the bike and so I can grab my gear and get out of here first thing I'm gonna do is open that vest up get my bird in there now 
I got all my calls and all my gear on this. Now there's a zipper here. I'm gonna pull this little bad boy out. Now when you're walking out, you've got orange on your back. I'm gonna go get the four-wheeler and get out of here. It's always a great feeling when everything comes together. The setup. The calling. The bird, and of course, the shot. It makes that morning ride out on the Yamaha that much better. Closed captioning of Angler and Hunter Television is brought to you in part by Ontario Out of Doors Magazine. Angler and Hunter Television has been brought to you by Canadian Tire, Nikon Sport Optics, Mercury Marine and Lund Boats, Yamaha ATVs, Browning Ammunition, Browning Firearms, Suffolk's Fishing Line, Rapala, Camillus Knives and Cuda Tools, Excalibur Crossbows, and Yukon Gear. For more information on the products used in this episode of Angler and Hunter Television, visit AHTV.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Remember, conserve and protect our great outdoors.